Hey guys, I'm Jax and this is my review for Hot D. Now I don't have to tell you what that means, you clicked on this video, but just to clarify, just so there is absolutely no confusion whatsoever, I of course mean this is my review for this hot dumpling. Mm -mm -mm. One hot dumpling, meat of pork. I, 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 I guess that's it. So, how does this hot dumpling stack up? That was surprisingly good. I've heard that this place is like a place close to work. Like it has bad dumplings and they're, they're very dry. Not as dry as I would imagine. Like there was no condiments. So I was like, I was expecting it to be very dry. <laughs> that was pretty good. I'm going to give that a three out of five. So on this week of Hot Tea, we got a bit of dragon action. We got a confrontation between our two main leads in a church that was pretty funny and felt kind of like it fitted in a kind of slapstick kind of comedy of errors sitcom. Just like last week we had two twins doing a bit of a parent trap situation and a bit of a funny hijinks kind of situation. This week, Alicent, the Green Queen, wasn't aware of the Game of Thrones books. A Song of Ice and Fire. Budget Daenerys is like Aegon, the prince that was promised. And I'm like, oh, those sweet words that I love for about seven and a half years. And for the last seven and a half years-ish or so, I just, I hear that and I go, ah, oh, don't remind me. Just please, please stop reminding me. And so then the Green Queen is all like, oh my God, this is just some kind of slapstick comedy of errors. Just a fun, silly misunderstanding. When he said Aegon, he was referencing the George R. R. Martin book series, A Song of Ice and Fire. He was referencing a fun little story. A fun little <laughs> incomplete story. And then Budget Daenerys is like, now we can hug and be friends. This is fun. This is cool. We have sorted out our differences. And then the Green Queen is like, no, 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 no. Why would we sort, why would we like figure this out and hug it out? Because I, 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 I will not admit that there was some kind of fun, comical misunderstanding about which Aegon he said in his dying breath. He was all like, the prince that was promised, Aegon, Game of Thrones, have you read the books of Song of Ice and Fire? Yeah, we, we've all read the books. We've had like 45 years to read the books. They've been out forever. Green Queen is the only one who hasn't read the books. And all of this was utterly delightful. I really like the idea that they sit down and like, we can figure this out. And she's like, we definitely can't figure this out. And then they just keep kind of saying their reasons for why they think they're right. And then when they find out, or at least one of them finds out, that they were definitely wrong and this has just been a misunderstanding. And that they like could hug it out. She's like, no, 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 no. But other things have happened. We've had a kind of a turn-based situation of like, we kill one of your sons, you come back, kill one of our sons. Now it's our time to go back and kill one of your sons. This is a turn-based strategy, Pokemon style, back and forth we've got going. I don't want to ruin it now. It's all a lot of fun. I liked all of that. Although I kind of feel like she probably could have just got up, pushed her away and been like, hey, it's her, kill her. And that would like end it. Like that would be it. There's just so many moments in this show and I feel like episode nine last year where the big dragon gets up and that old lady Targaryen was all like, I could kill everybody, but I won't because then this show would be over. So I, I just won't. And this week we get two of those situations. And whilst I feel like there are kind of reasonings behind them, like they go, well, you told me not to like attack them. But then like you decide then you're going to attack them. Like the dragon, the dragon ridden by a character who I 100% am sure was not in any previous episodes, or if they were, they were either recast or they haven't spoken any lines of dialogue that have registered to me on any level. Like this woman, one of the Valerian daughters, is riding a dragon like she's meant to be a character, like I'm meant to know who she is. I honestly feel like this is the first episode in the entire series that made me feel like I was one of the normies watching Game of Thrones. Like the amount of times I'd go into work with Game of Thrones and I'd be like, oh, how good was it when this happened and this happened? I'm naming all these names and talking about all these characters and places and locations and houses and all this stuff. And someone's like, who's that like old guy that's kind of creeping on the queen, the dragon one? And I'm like, Jorah? Do you mean Jorah? And they're like, who? And then like, I get a photo up. They're like, yeah, that guy. I'm like, that's Jorah. You don't know Jorah's? Are you even watching this show? And to be fair, I now understand what every single normie watching Game of Thrones felt when they're just like, there's so many characters. There's so many characters. I'm not re-watching this repeatedly every single day. I'm not thinking about this universe. I'm just watching the episode. And then when it finishes, I think about it for maybe 15 minutes and then I forget about it until the next week. I never would have guessed this. I never could have comprehended this somehow. And the show's like, it's a well-made show. It's a beautiful looking show. But somehow I am now like a normie watching House of the Dragon. 
Is that because I hate Game of Thrones because of how it ended? Is that because this show is just not really grabbing me in the same way? I don't really care about any of the characters outside of Matt Smith and like maybe Aemons and Aegon. But there's just a lot going on with those two characters. I like that dynamic. It's really kind of twisted and awful. I don't know. Just a lot of these characters, I'm like, I just don't care. So maybe this dragon riding lady has been in it before. But honestly, this is the first time that I've noticed her be in the show. So she rides down on a dragon and chases the guys into the forest and doesn't burn them. Because she's like, well, I was just like, I was just, I just wanted to see if it was Kristen Cole. How? How? How would she possibly know it's him? There's a bunch of guys who dress like that. To know 100% it's him. Madness. Insanity. Doesn't make any sense to me. I just don't believe that she could see his face and register that that is him. Nonsense and insane. Also, she just doesn't burn them because like, I don't know. I just didn't want to burn them because you told me not to like actually attack them. And then they're all like, so we know they're out there. We're going to go attack them, right? What's going on here? What's going on here? There are so many times where dragons could just end everything and they just don't. I don't know. Looks fantastic though. That scene looked fantastic. That little spindly green, gray, whatever dragon looked really good. And so to circle back to the Green Queen and Budget Daenerys, they have their conversation and I kind of guess that the Green Queen is like, hey, so I don't want you to die even though we're going to have a giant big battle and have lots of different wars and all this stuff and eventually one of us will have to kill the other or someone on our side will have to kill one of us or whatever. I don't want you to die, so sneak out before anyone finds you. But let's have a big war! It just like doesn't make sense to me and I understand there's meant to be some kind of like, I don't know, it's like nuanced, like they still love each other, but they're in a war and they can't escape it now because of other circumstances that have happened with the turn-based killing of different people on either side for this season so far. So like, I get that that's like, I guess what's going on, but it's just kind of funny because I feel like there's going to be a lot of times later where she's like, well, go do this war thing. And they're going to be in situations to kill her. But she had this situation right now where it's like, you have found out that you were wrong. Aegon was not the right Aegon. It was a funny misunderstanding of names because every second goddamn Targaryen is called Aegon. So yeah, I just kind of feel like personally she should have killed her then or captured her at least. I don't know. It just seems like probably I haven't looked into it because I just watched the episode I'm just recording. I'm going to bet maybe uh, all the money I've ever had in my entire life that that is not a book scene. But yeah, last time I felt like this didn't really kind of make sense was the episode 9 of last season where the dragon roared at all of the team green but didn't like kill any of them. And then I was like, oh, I found out later. Yeah, it's not based on like a scene from the books because it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. Just like write it in a different way. What? <laughs> I don't want to mention it, but oh, I, every time that old Targaryen lady just says or does anything, all I think is, I don't care what you say. I don't like what you have to say. Like, stop acting this way because your character and what you've done is different to everything you say as a character. Because actions speak louder than words I don't remember from mediocre dialogue. Like, your actions are that you exploded out of some kind of prison tunnel system or whatever, killed countless hundreds maybe thousands of innocent random civilians and then when your eight or ten enemies were literally lined up in a row to be burned and you could have just ended everything there you didn't and you rode off leaving hundreds of civilians dead so every time she speaks now i'm just checked out i'm like i hate this woman because she acts like she didn't do that the show pretends and acts like that didn't happen that was like a crazy, crazy massacre. Maybe on a different scale to anything we've seen. Like when Cersei blew up a whole thing, there were at least her enemies in there and the collateral damage outside of that was tragic and she didn't care because she's a monster and a villain. This is like, she's acting like she didn't do a similar explosion of death and chaos. And I just, I hate her. So every time she's on screen, I'm like, I hate her and I don't understand why anyone's on Team Black. They're all super boring. Matt Smith carrying the show and Team Black on his shoulders. All of Tim Green are just far more interesting. That being said, Matt Smith's scenes at Harren Hall, really exciting, really interesting. The visuals of him walking through the ruined castle, all haunted and blue and dark and raining, looks spectacular, looks super interesting. There's that scene where he's at the, 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 the Winterfell tree, the Weirwood tree, whatever they're called, and he's like standing there and there's some kind of weird potential witch lady and she's like, you will die in this hall, Matt Smith from Doctor Who. And he's like, is that a spoiler? Did you spoil the end of the show? Do you spoil my plot? Is that, is that a spoiler? Did you ruin the show for me? Random witch lady? Probably? 